Scream Stream is supported by listeners like you. If you'd like to support Scream Stream and get access to previous seasons of the podcast and other exclusive content, go to patreon.com slash Jimbo Lewis. Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your spoiler-free guide to streaming horror entertainment. I'm your host, Jimbo Lewis. If you're new to the show, what I do is pick a horror movie from one of the various streaming services and give it a spoiler-free review. Scream Stream is available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and many more. If you're into horror video games, I stream live on Twitch Monday through Friday night from 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at twitch.tv slash Jimbo Lewis. You can come over there, hang out with me, chat with the with the community. Uh, we have a pretty good time playing all the spoopy games. Uh, so it has been... It's been a, a week since I did uh, an episode. Uh, my father passed away uh, on October 9th. Uh, so we went up there for the funeral. And then the, the week after, I just wasn't really, still wasn't really feeling myself. Um, so I just had to take a break. Uh, sort of just settle into things, get my head right. Uh, but we are back. Uh, and if, if my audio sounds different, I'm recording a new way. So I'm using, right now I'm using OBS Studio uh, because uh, I have all of my filters and everything put into OBS. So I have like my uh, compressor and my noise reduction, all that is built in uh, and I can do all, I can just record straight from there. I do have, I have... um uh, Sony's Vegas, Vegas studio. But the issue is as soon as I record something and then add a plug into it, like a, uh, a EQ or, or something like that, it crashes and I lose everything. So I'm still working on the whole windows recording thing. Um, I was using a Mac, um, but now I'm, I have a PC, uh, that I've been using for a while and I still got to figure out, <laughs> figure out the recording situation, on Windows, we're working on it though. So I decided to try OBS because uh, this way I can at least record all the audio and then, or with with the uh, effects and everything applied as I record, uh, and then just edit it down in in my audio editor, uh, which I have. I do have an audio editor, uh, and uh, see how it goes from there. If if it sounds good or if it sounds bad, let me know. Either way, uh, you can hit me up on Twitter, uh, twittercom slash the Jimbo Lewis. Uh, so there you go. And uh, remember, this the show is supported by you. Uh, and we do have a couple of supporters that I greatly appreciate. Uh, Lyle and uh, Eric Vasquez. Uh, thank you all so much for contributing to the show. I, I appreciate that. Y'all keep y'all at least for this month. Y'all have kept it running. I appreciate that. Uh, if you'd like to consider supporting the show, head over patreon.com slash Jimbo Lewis, and uh, you can get all the episodes from seasons one and two. Season one from 2013, and then uh, season two is from 2018. Uh, and then I took a break, and we're now into season three. So yeah, con consider becoming a Patreon. Patron. Over on Patreon. <laughs> so this week's review, we're going to be talking about uh, Incident in a Ghostland. This is available on Shudder. Uh, after the review, I do want to talk about a game that I've been playing on Twitch that I've been streaming live called The Dark Occult, formerly known as Conjuring House, and I think they changed that uh, due to copyright issues. So I'll be talking about that, doing like a pretty much a, a pretty much a review. I haven't finished the game yet; I'm pretty close, um, but I think I'm, I've played it enough to give my thoughts and, and let you know whether or not it's worth the money. Uh, so we'll do that right after the review, which is coming up right now. So, Incident in a Ghost Land currently has a 6.4 on IMDb. This was written and directed by Cascal Laugier. Laugier? Laugier? Uh, he's he's writer and director of Martyrs. So, by hearing his name, you can just imagine what this movie is going to be like. This stars Crystal Reed, uh, Meline Farmer, and Anastasia Phillips. And for a brief plot synopsis... A mother of two who inherits a house is confronted with murderous intruders on the first night in their new home and fights for her daughter's lives. Sixteen years later, when the daughters reunite at the house, things get really strange. 
<laughs> and that that is the that is a plot synopsis, um, which is a little it's it's silly. It's it's poorly written plot synopsis, but that that is it. Uh, so basically, um, there there's a couple of intruders when the mother and the two daughters move into the house. Two daughters are, are really young, probably around uh, maybe thirteen, fourteen, somewhere right around there. Uh, and then, uh, we see the whole thing happen. It's brutal, by the way. It, it is brutal. This is a brutal film. Uh, it is, it, it holds no punches. Um, so we see, we see that happen. That's not really a spoiler. It, it happens. It's an intruder attack, uh, two guys. And then we fast forward to when they're grown up. Uh, the one sister stayed at the house with mom while the other sister moved off and, and, became a writer and the uh, sister calls her back and says she needs help. So the sister comes back and, and notices that, that things are, are really strange. <laughs> things are really strange. Uh, and uh, she notices that uh, her sister has been, looks like she's been beaten. Uh, sister claims uh, that there's ghosts in the house or it feels like there's ghosts. Uh, and so that is where the mystery begins. Uh, let me talk about the, the direction. The direction was really, was great. Uh, Pascal is a great director. Now I know I did a review of Martyrs in season one and I didn't really like the film. I didn't like the film because of its content, uh, its plot and, and just the overall, the overall storyline of the movie. I just didn't like, uh, but his direction is amazing. Uh, acting is great in this film. I don't really recognize any of these folks, I uh, just don't, don't recognize them, but they all did a really great job. Camera work is nice. Uh, it makes you feel there's a lot of close up shots. There's a lot of close and mid and mid level shots. And it gives the whole film like a, a cluster claustrophobic feel. I really, it puts you right in the scene. I really like that. I like that a lot. Camera movements are nice. Set design is, is really cool. The house itself looks spooky. Uh, Every, every part of it, whenever the, the girls move through the house, you just get this creepy feeling. Uh, it is amazing. The color palette is, is nice. It's just muted tones. So you just get this dreary, this sense of dread throughout the entire film. Um, and it's very dreary. No bright colors or anything like that. It, it it's just uh, a dreadful thing to watch. <laughs> uh, so the color really adds to all that, to that whole mood. Very little color at all, which I like. I thought I, th I thought that was completely fine. Story, however, again, this I think again this is where I have an issue with with Pascal. The story I liked it up until halfway through the film. Uh, it was it started off as a really cool ghost story, uh, and then halfway through the film, the whole plot is revealed. Or the big reveal happens. This is halfway through the film now. This, 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 these are the things that should be done like in the third act, I think. But halfway through, the plot, the, the plot's revealed, the, the curtain is pulled back, and then it's just a downhill ride from there. And I, I, that's just really not my thing. I don't enjoy that as much as I think, uh, some other folks do. Because I got a lot of hate <laughs> for my review on Martyrs. Like, People are like, I can't believe you did not like that movie. And I just didn't. I just, it just wasn't for me. I didn't like the story. And it's, a, it's, I don't, I'm not going to say it's a similar story, but it's a similar mechanic, story, storytelling mechanic that Pascal used in this. So halfway through, we, we, we get the big reveal and it's, it's disappointing to me. I, I wanted that to happen like maybe in the third act. So the reveal happens. And now we're just kind of waiting for the movie to end and it drags on and it drags and it drags. And that to me was disappointing. The other aspect of the film, and this is just, this is completely subjective, uh, was hard for me to watch. This is a hard film for me to watch uh, because of the amount of violence towards the female characters uh, it made me feel really uncomfortable. I know that's probably what he was going for. That's what he's going for. But for me, it's, it's a hard thing to watch. I don't enjoy watching movies like that. 
Uh, I, when I watch a horror movie, you know, I, I want. Well, let me okay. Let me put it like this: I I watch horror for pure escapism, and when I have something as real as what is portrayed in this film, I don't really. I'm not enjoying myself. I'm not enjoying the movie. I'm just wanting it to end by that point. And it's weird because some films, you know, they they do have violence towards women, but it, it's done in a way that's not hyper realistic. I guess is what I'm trying to say. You, I hope, I hope I'm making sense here. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. This was was hyper realistic, and I just didn't enjoy it. Uh, I just wanted it to be over. With that said, this is a well made movie. It is well acted, well directed. It deserves a high rating. It really does. It really does deserve a high rating. It's got a 6.4 right now, as I mentioned. Putting my emotions aside, uh, I think the film deserves like a, a four, a four out of five. Maybe even like a four out of four and a half out of five. But for me, because because of the subject matter and the way the story was told, and the the plot. The plot reveal in the middle of the film, this wasn't my kind of movie. For me, I wouldn't watch it again. Uh, and if I if I saw another film of his, like if I if I saw one pop up on Shutter or something, I don't think I would watch it. Uh, so I I would give this film personally for me like a two and a half. Uh, and I know I'm I'm kind of like on the fringe, I'm the outlier here. Uh, so you will probably like it. You might like it. If you like Martyrs, you'll probably like this one. And uh, I recommend you at least watch it. Check it out. Uh, but if you're like me and you, and you just don't enjoy these types of movies where it's just brutality against women. And it's, I mean, it's, I'm, not, I'm not saying we shouldn't have that. I'm just saying I don't personally like to see it. I don't enjoy a film with that stuff in it. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You probably won't want to watch it. Uh, but it is well made. It's well acted. Well directed. So if that doesn't bother you, if you're not squeamish towards that sort of subject matter, go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, you just you just might enjoy it. Uh, this was recommended to me by uh, uh, somebody in my chat one night when I was playing uh, Resident Evil. Not Resident Evil. I was playing Alien Isolation. Uh, and uh, one of my regulars came in. She, she recommended recommended this movie to me set out she she thought I'd like it a lot so I give it a shot <laughs> it wasn't for me it just I I don't enjoy that kind of movie uh, so I can sit here and repeat myself but I'm not going to I will just say this gets at least a four and a half out of five without my emotional involvement check it out check it out and that's all I got to say about that so, for the game that I've been playing, uh, I've been playing this game called The Dark Occult. So, this is available on Steam for fourteen ninety nine. This was previously called The Conjuring House. And I'm, I'm assuming they changed it due to copyright laws and all that good stuff. Uh, but it has nothing to do with the films. Nothing to do with the films. None of the no plot lines. There's no conversion of plots or anything like that. Uh, so, I guess... The Dark Occult is, is probably a better name anyway. Uh, and this was gifted to me uh, by uh, uh, one of my moderators on Twitch, uh, Roughneck2C. Uh, and I've been playing this for about two, two and a half weeks, maybe even three weeks. It's it's a long game. It's I think they, they rate it at about 20 hours. And for 15 bucks, that is a huge value. Um, that's a huge value. Uh, Alien Isolation was only like 16 hours. Well, supposed to be 16 hours. I've, I've have streamed that game for 56 hours. No lie. Um, just because I spent most of my time hiding in lockers. Uh, but the dark occult is probably one of the best horror game experiences I've played in a long time. Uh, it's first person. Uh, there is the, or the sound design is absolutely phenomenal. If you're wearing, you, you gotta wear headphones when you play this game. It is just crazy. Uh, 
they do a great job of making things sound like they're coming behind you. Uh, a few times it sounded like something was right in my room uh, while I was playing it. Uh, the visuals are great. It's an indie, it's an independent game. Uh, and the graphics are actually really good. They've done a good job on the graphics. The story is, is okay. It's an okay story. Uh, um, basically, uh, you are part of a paranormal investigation team made up of mediums and parapsychologists. And this takes place in the, I think it takes place in like the fifties. Uh, well, your team went into the house to investigate and, uh, most of them disappeared and you haven't heard from them. So you went into the house or you went back to the house to, to see if you can find them. Uh, you quickly find out that they unleashed this lady demon. And now it's up to you to conquer her and send her back to heck. <laughs> and, uh, in the mean, and, and all the while find your team or find out what happened to your team. And that, that's kind of like the goal of the game. It's basically you solving puzzles while you investigate this mansion, this, this giant mansion. Uh, this demon lady will pop up at, at random, uh, and chase you throughout the house. And you have safe rooms that you can run into. Uh, and this is also where you would save. Uh, and it's interesting because even though you go into the safe room, if you don't close the door, she'll still get you. So you have to make sure you go into the room, close the door, and then you're good. Um, it is absolutely terrifying. Uh, there's a lot of really good jump scares. Um, there's mechanics where you have to like pull a sheet off of what you think might be a statue. And sometimes it turns out to be not a statue. Uh, when she pops up out of nowhere, it's terrifying. Um, again, the sound design is great. Um, it's one of, like I said, it is one of the, the scariest horror experiences I've played in a long time. There's no real combat. You, you either have to run or, or die. <laughs> like you, there's, there's no hiding. There's no hiding. Uh, you just have to, you just have to run away. You can't collect little talismans. So if the lady appears, appears to you, you can flash a talisman at her and she'll go away for a brief amount of time, enough time for you to get to a safe room, uh, and save your game. Uh, and there's, there's some other aspects that come in later in the game, but, but that would just give you spoilers. And I don't want to give you any spoilers. Uh, again, this is available on PC only. You can get this on Steam, uh, for $14.99. Well worth the money for the amount of, of time and content that you get. It is well worth the money. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. It's super scary. Uh, it's funny because I, I say this all the time in chat, uh, Horror movies don't bother me at all. I can watch horror movies all day, all night, 24-7. Don't bother me. Horror video games terrify the crap out of me because you you are in that experience. You are in the room. You are in control. And whatever is happening on screen is happening to you. And there is there there is a feeling of real consequence. Uh, and that's why I love horror games. Um, definitely recommend The Dark Occult. Give it a Give it a, a look-see. Give it a playthrough. Uh, I don't think it really takes that much to run it. Uh, let me see what the uh, requirements are. The minimum requirements are 6 gigs of RAM, uh, an NVIDIA GeForce uh, GTX 760, or, or a Radeon 260X. Those are pretty old video cards. Um, DirectX version 11. Uh, and that's really about it. Uh, recommended specs are eight gigs of RAM and uh, GTX 970, uh, which is a pretty old. I mean, that that card came out five, six years ago, uh, and uh, ten gigs of available hard drive space. Uh, so it doesn't take a whole lot to run. So definitely recommend it. Check it out. That is called The Dark Occult. So that's going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. If you'd like to keep up with me outside of the podcast, you can do so at twitter.com slash the Jimbo Lewis, or uh, you can join the Facebook uh, page. That's facebook.com slash screenpod. Or you can check out screenpod.com, and there I have uh, links to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, uh, and a direct feed. Uh, and the Patreon link is there as well. 
uh, I also have links to the Twitch channel, YouTube, uh, and in the Twitter Twitter account as well. And if you have a movie you'd like me to review, uh, you can hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. And finally, music used for Scream Stream is recorded by Kevin McLeod over at Incompetech.com. Until next week, I'm Jimbo Lewis saying if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. Thank you.